Hello everybody and welcome to Royalty in the Round, WrestleRoyalty.com's very own video podcast. We have a big show today, we're going to be talking about everything WrestleMania weekend, not just the biggest show, the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania, we're also going to be talking about NXT TakeOver, we're going to be talking about ROH Supercard, if we have time we might even talk a bit about WrestleCon and Lucha Underground versus Impact Wrestling. Stick around, this is a a little bit extra longer episode. We're going to try to go 45 minutes or an hour to you guys. We're going to try to cover everything. Stay tuned. It's going to be great. Hey guys, royalty in the round. I'm Sir Mitch, Kendra Bunyan, Botch Reed, and a very special guest to you today, Jason, newest member of the Wrestle Royalty team. Say hello, mate. <laughs> Hello. He's right under me. Yes, just as you were, I'm sure you would like him to be, Botch, right under you. It's like, this is like, it's like the Brady Bunch, you know? <laughs> the Brady, Here's yeah, the so, well, hang on, Brady Bunch here, right here, like a, oh, man, I think I saw that show once when I was like four years old, I'm that young. That's so, because you're still drinking um, Civilac, let it go. <laughs> And he doesn't know what it is. The joke is complete. Kendra's talking about Ben and Jerry's, and you're talking about sweet dads. And I'm Australian. I don't know what these things are. They don't have Similac in Australia. No, I posted it like five times. At least Jason knows what's up. He knows about Tim Tams in the course of the Tim Tam Slam. Shout out, mate. Nice one. Nice enough that you know that. Okay. Not helping. Enough with, the, enough with the food stuff. Enough with Australia versus America. <laughs> Australia was in any way. Let's just go on. <laughs> I'm going to get top black for that one. Let's just keep going. Let's just go go ahead and talk about WrestleMania weekend. The biggest, not just the weekend, but probably the biggest week in the pro wrestling cal- calendar. It's not just about WWE anymore. We've got NXT TakeOver. We've got you know, Ring of Honor doing their big Super Card of Honor show. Kenny versus Cody. No, they've drawn the biggest crowd in their history. No, we've got WrestleCon, the annual convention of the best indie promotions and the best indie talents. And on that show, we'll have Lucha on the Ground versus Impact Wrestling. You know, so many things going on, so many great matches happening. How about we just start fresh right here, right now? Botch, what is the main thing you're looking forward to this weekend out of everything? Mania, TakeOver, everything, no? Oh, jeez. Ring of Honor, WrestleCon, um... just... What are, what are the things you're most looking forward to seeing? Yeah, it's interesting because it used to be that you could pretty much count on NXT TakeOver to win the weekend for just about everything. Mm. And this time, yeah. you can't. And you can't <laughs> because Finn Balor. You can't because Seth Rollins. You can't because AJ Styles. And you can't because Shinsuke Nakamura. And you can't because storylines. You can't. There's just no way to do it now. So in terms of what I'm looking forward to, I'm hyped about the whole nine. Like I'm more excited for a weekend of wrestling perhaps than I've ever been. This is going to be an amazing weekend for everybody involved. I'm very excited to see this whole thing go down. I really am. There, I can't pick favorites. I really can't for the first time ever. I just can't. Jason, what are you most looking forward to, mate? Probably Mania. Yeah, well, although, I figure, figure that. Although, like, what, what, uh, with TakeOver, I, I always love TakeOver on Mania Weekend because that just seems to be when they pull out the best stops and the best mm. in the performance rings. Yeah. Best in ring performances. Oh, yeah. By far. It, it, not just that, it's, it's also it's interesting to see who gets called up the, the next night sometimes yeah. even. Yeah, right. Especially now that they have the Andre the Giant for a rumble, or rumble every year. So Battle, I'm Battle Royal, yeah. probably That's some what... names there. Oh yeah, have to be. Yeah, and yeah. I'll think... throw in the women's Battle Royal. I mean, with my pick to win it, um, I don't know if I should say or not, but... Yeah, oh, no, we yeah. have up. It might say you can't. You can't okay. say it's it? Not, it, it predicts that coming up until tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that just adds a whole new element now. Mm. So, it's going to be interesting. 
Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, Ken, what what are you most looking forward to this WrestleMania weekend out of everything? Oh, man, this weekend is going to be so tough for me because I am not going to be able to catch NXT TakeOver live as it happens. And that really is is killing me. I'm going to be on the road at that hour and I, I just can't see it. And I can't watch it with the rest of the royalty community, which is killing me. Um, I'm excited for everything. I want to see what Lucha Underground and Impact can do together. Yeah. But I'll be doing that, following up with that later in the week. Obviously, WrestleMania, there are so many matches on that card that, that have our dream matches. Yeah. Things that we never thought we would ever see and yet we're getting them and we're getting them on the grandest stage of them all I have to admit after everything else I'm really looking forward to Monday Night Raw and seeing what happens and and well, I can, and see, sorry, I can I tell you what's see that what's not just sorry Ken I want to see that Brock Lesnar isn't there oh gotcha <laughs> Same. He won't be. He Same. won't be. Roman will be, and fans in the attendance would rather Brock would be. So that's gonna be. I don't know about Brock that, Lesnar. but oh, I think if they had a choice, I think they'll just be oh, happy to have the title off of Brock Lesnar. I think that will. Yeah. I think that'll make it okay. I do no, see I what do. you mean. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I really do too. Yeah, yeah I do too. Just that you know, I worry that you know. They've done everything they can to get Roman over, and this is going to be his big crowning moment, and it's just going to fall flat again. So, yeah, then they can quickly put the strap on someone else. I don't think yeah, it. But that's. Go ahead. But that's the yeah. But that that's the thing, though. I think they'll stubbornly go for another six months before they start. Okay, we'll try someone else. Yeah. I don't. They, Barack has held it hostage for a full year. I think it needs some shaking up over the next six months to a year after Reigns gets it. Yeah, but Reigns, but Reigns is Vince's boy. It's not going anywhere. Once it's on him, it'll stay there for. A, you, I mean, we we know it's true. We don't like it, but we know it's probably true. Probably, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think yeah. just just the fact that he got it off of Brock, I think, I think that may make things easier for him on Monday night, and maybe even going forward, because a lot of people don't like Brock either anymore. They're just kind of tired of it. So, I think it'll be all right. right. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the storyline that they're running, you know, uh, using, you know, the common complaints of, you know, oh, Brock Lesnar's a part-timer, all that stuff, and having Rain say it, I get the idea behind it, but it yeah. wouldn't work because Reigns is the only person that's less liked than Lesnar right now. Yes. If, if, they, if, they, if, they, that, if they did that storyline with someone like Rollins or, or, or Bella, it would yeah. work to perfection. But because Reigns is the least liked out of anybody right now, quite yeah. frankly, it's 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 it, it, it just sadly doesn't work, and, and it's not not nothing nothing of his fault of his. He's doing everything he can, just you know, you know, just damage is done. And he's Vince's boy, like he's Vince's boy. It's not really Brock. <laughs> he's Vince's boy. Like, of all the people yeah, to I do know, this, Vince, you we, are the wrong one, bro. Like, you are the yeah. absolute wrong one to do it. I've been trashing it in the raw blog because the premise is, as Mitch said, it's. Not from you. No. Mm. Well, no. The premise is the premise is fine. It's just the um. I agree. Yeah, you know, they are selected to do it. With, so. Yeah, I agree completely. So yeah. I mean, in my opinion, with that match, I honestly kind of wish that Braun and Roman were swapped. Braun was going for the strap because he has proven himself more. Yeah. Of over with his strength and everything. I agree. Whereas Roman is just, he's too sporadic and all over the place. He's not a consistent week to week powerhouse like Braun is proving himself to be. Agreed. I mean, he kind of is, but not. No, and Braun can carry it on Mike in ways that Reigns just can't. I agree. Right. He's much more articulate. I mean that mm. program that that Reigns did with with uh, Cena and The Rock definitely 
helped a little bit, but it's not enough. enough. No, it's not. No, it, it's still it's still needs major improvement. But yeah, it's better than it was a year and a half ago. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Big Tom. Maybe we're just, it could just be that we're being impatient with him, but that storyline doesn't help. Yeah, like, yeah, don't, yeah. don't shove him yeah. down my throat. Let him get better yeah. organically. That's the issue that everyone has. Like, he's just been shoved down our throat so hard. Like, you have to like him. There's no reason but, to do that. Just do it organically, and we wouldn't have such a big problem with it. They haven't and, done things organically in so long that I don't know if they know how to. I think the people who are getting over organically are getting over organically because they're being ignored by the higher up. Like Braun exactly. Strowman. Braun is organic, and, though. Braun happened quite I, naturally. I, I mean, I oh, feel it, you. dude. I think it's well, always yeah, that, I think it was kind of ignoring him. You know, send him out there with the jobbers. Send him out there with the jobbers. He's just going to keep beating up jobbers. And the fans fell in love with the man. That's true. That's true. I see what you're saying. And another uh, example, too, could be, along with what Kendra was just saying, is um, is Rusev, who, yeah. like, was just reported. Oh, yeah. He threatened to walk out. I mean, exactly. like, Rusev, we were, we were pulled up the hands down being extreme powerhouse as well, but they're not utilizing and him correctly. funny. He's funny. Dude's hilarious. Yeah, he's, he's quite clever, actually. He's a I mean, I love he's the one he's delivery. Yeah. The fan that I absolutely love, though, is how they wanted the Rusev Day thing to be this major heel gimmick, but it's completely backfired <laughs> on them, and now it's completely over with the fans, and they're in love with it. Yeah. Well, and I, I absolutely love it. it yeah, is. I do too. Because it, it throws a complete wrench in their plans because now Vince and Triple H have to go, oh, crap, what do we do? It's almost I agree. not quite as big, but the only comparison I can give is Daniel Bryan in the yes and no stuff. All the yes and no chants were just, were just him as heel trying to be as obnoxious as he can, and it caught on. So, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what is kind of happening with Rusev. Oh, yeah. It hit. And that's part of the reason why Daniel Bryan eventually had to be turned face because the, it got to a point where they couldn't keep him as heel because everybody loved him. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Speaking of Daniel Bryan, moving uh, focus here, how <laughs> awesome is it after about three years and having about 100,000 doctors clear him, finally WWE's doctors clear, cleared him and we're getting him at WrestleMania? I mean, that's just... You can't you can't write anything better, can you? It's a perfect storybook fairy tale. It's going to be great to sit him back in the ring, and uh, it's just going to be wonderful. Uh, what do you, what, Kendra? I think you should go first. What uh, What are you most looking forward to now, uh, now that Daniel Bryan's uh, getting back into in, into the ring? Oh, I, I mean, of course, and I've stated this numerous times. Like per day, every time Bryan takes a bump, I'm at the wind for a while. Um. It's just how I am. I'm a mom. It's what I ha where my brain goes. But I think Daniel Bryan, I was thinking about this because I've been watching so much old WWE. And they had huge names. You know, they had Taker, they had Trip, they had, they had so many big top superstars. And nowadays, it does. None of them have the feel. They don't get the reaction that guys like Austin and Rock used to get. But Daniel Bryan does. Yeah. Daniel Bryan is going to be right back to character in the company as a whole, and I'm thrilled. Same. I think that's how they're going to keep him when his contract is starting to come up. I think that's what's going to keep him there is the fans, because he will not want to disappoint the fans by going to a smaller promotion. And yeah. he will continue to carry the WWE for a couple of years. And to touch on what Kendra just said, at that with the with his contract coming up, that's all, I hate saying it, but I think that's part of the reason why WWE finally caved in was because they said oh, yep. was was, great. I was honestly great. believe he probably went to Vince and said either you put me in the ring or I'm leaving after Mania. Take your pick. Yep. Yeah. And it put him in a bind. And 
with everything that went on with Brock, with the different contracts and everything else behind the scenes, we know how much he makes. I mean, he makes more than an NFL player in a year with WWE. And he makes 500 grand a night almost. Right. On, on on top of the five million guarantee, on top of the guarantees for pay per views and everything else, and he only oh. has to appear sixteen times a year. I mean, oh. I'm pretty. I mean, that's pretty good leverage right there for Brian to go to WWE and say, "Hey, look, take me or I'm going." Yeah. <clears throat> take your pick. And you know, you know, you, you, it came to see. You know, he didn't want to. You know, limit his exposure going to smaller promotions. Thing of it is. Him going to Ring of Honor or New Japan or CMLL, which was his plan, would have boosted their exposure anyway. When and they're, and they're looking to get more exposure, so it would have been a win-win either way. So, oh, could you imagine if he had left and gone to Impact? Oh, oh he would have. No, he, I can't. Well, that wouldn't have happened, <laughs> but I'm just saying. Could no. you yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I can't imagine. Oh, just no, I'm you wouldn't have done it. They would have to have let go of a bunch of people just to afford it, you know. Yeah. I mean, and that would be having to pay by at least half, if not more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if he goes almost anywhere besides WWE, he can work on that pay cut. It's just a oh. matter of, yeah, it's just a matter of how much. I would. Th- he'd right. be able to do well away from WWE, but yeah, there would definitely be a pay cut. Yeah. Well, it, it would depend. I mean, it, probably. I mean, it would depend. I mean, guys like Omega and Okada are making like a mil a year, so he could do better than that in WWE, bro. Yeah, probably. Probably make with merchandising. You probably make too. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh yeah. yeah, and plus like anything else, any ancillary show that goes on or other promotional appearances, yeah. he get paid for. It, it adds up, you know, over there specifically. Yeah, sure. True. Yeah. And I just wanted to touch on as well, the other thing that Kendra mentioned about the interaction with the fans that Brian has, that Austin had and The Rock had, she and I have had conversations about it, about things about that, where the the superstars today just don't, they seem to have that disconnect. They're not connecting with the fans the same way. Brian gets it. Brian Ooh, connects. Big it's time. it's it's because you know Austin Rock they were they were given a, a level of freedom to you know Absolutely. be able to right. connect. It, now everything is so micromanaged that talents don't know where, whether they're coming or going. Literally, and they're, in the ring with, they're, they're in the ring with the microphone in their hand. They've just, they've probably just me- mem- memorized something uh, the creative team has written like five minutes beforehand, and it's yeah. Your cookie cutter. They can't deviate even slightly. They can't deviate a single syllable. Exactly. Otherwise, they'll be punished for it. And then, and that's, you know, it, and and it, and it just comes off as hollow. It comes off as fake. And they can't. They can't. Yeah. Well, and that's part of the issue that I have as a fan coming up from NXT to WWE. In NXT, they have, full, from my understanding, they have almost full control over their character their development, their entrances. Mm-hmm. I don't not, know how much not, of that's true or not. Yeah, they not, not full. They they have not, no, no, but not full. Okay. No, no, so, no, no, no talents would have full creative control. <laughs> that would be a disaster. That 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 would that would be Hulk Hogan in WCW disaster. But it is no, it no. is right. Well, to Jason's I'm point, it is better. Like basically, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, the yeah. development not. there is more like, oh, hey, yeah. here's what you're gonna do. Go with it. But when you go up to WWE, the Raw right. and SmackDown, it's like, okay, this is what you're going to do. Here's your script. Stick to it. Very much. And yeah. I, there's, like you just said, there's no leeway whatsoever. Either you go with it or there's the door. Yeah. But Tell that to Emma. On, on the other hand, you get guys like CJ Styles who couldn't deal with not having a script. And he couldn't talk. Right. And now yeah. that the script, he's amazing on mic. Yeah, but that's that that's few and far between. I get it. Some people like AJ do yeah. need that because because their strengths are in the ring and not on the microphone. Even earlier early on in his career, Daniel Bryan probably probably needed that because oh. again his strength oh, in I, ring in, and he didn't have much much mic skills. But you know, he adapted to their system unlike most people and he got and he what did he do for giggling over? I was just, I just looked at Kendra, that's all. 
most ignore me go ahead continue i'm being an idiot perfect. i'm trying to host the show here guys anyway <laughs> jason this is what i have to deal with every day get used to it buddy i don't have a script i'm sorry forgive me no scripting here no, you're, you're breaking where, 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 sorry where, man where, the hundred thousand fine I feel like Psycho Sid getting told where life fell. Anyway. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, shout out, shout, shout out to Sid Vicious if you watch it, man. Well, I'm actually a big fan. Um, Are you now? <laughs> I actually am. I, I always liked him. I know, I, I know, I know I'm a minority here, but I always, I, I always liked him. Anyway, what was I going on? Ow, 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 ow. Well. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't you. Turn stone. You talk faster than the Oh dear. I'm not helping at all. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Anyway, Dan, I'm going back Dan, to my skills. Like I said, Daniel Bryan needed that stuff to, in the beginning, just like AJ Styles, because his strengths were in ring and not character development. But yeah. yeah. But honestly, it's like, like Jason said, in NXT, in other places, Ring of Honor, New Japan, you know, the you know, you know, pe- talents are given a degree of not creative control, but creative input. Yeah, they're, they're right. able, and and, yeah. and because they have input, and because you know they're not you know, like this top. This is what you're going to do. They actually sit down with the people in charge and say, okay, what are we doing? You know, the, the people booking the show actually take the time and sit down with each talent and say, okay, this, what do you want to talk about? This is what we want to talk about. This is what we're planning. This is what what do you want to have a go about? What you know, just. It's, it's, a, it's a collaboration is what is needed here. But oh, yeah. WWE today, it's not about collaboration. In the Attitude Era, before then and a bit after, guys like, you know, uh, Rock, Austin, and even lower level guys like Road Dog, like Triple H before he became big, you know, uh, they would all get a chance with either Vince or one of, or Pat Patterson or Joe Briscoe. They'd sit down and say, what are we doing? Right. You know, everything still everything's was still got up to Vince's final call, obviously, but everybody had not everybody had a say, but everybody had opportunity to have a say, and that's what's needed today. So Agreed. it took Triple H how many different types of characters before he finally hit it? I exactly. think exactly two or three. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, terrorizing. <laughs> Who could forget that one? Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Another one you know, is uh, is uh, Kane as um, Isaac Yank. Oh yeah. gosh, the dentist. <laughs> Who thought that was a good idea? Oh my gosh, Russo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Russo. From doing that to being fake, fake Diesel. Yes, I that mean, was the worst one ever. Oh. I felt terrible for him in that gimmick because he was never going to win in that gimmick. He was doomed oh. to fail. No. That was like a yeah. rib. <laughs> who, who was it who played the fake Razor Ramon? Oh, gosh. What was, what was his I name? Know I know him. I just can't place his name. No clue. I can't remember his name. I just watched it not too long ago and I can't. I don't oh. remember. I'm gonna, I have to find it now. But Kane, Kane is proof that the first couple characters just didn't click. They didn't work. He's trying with the best of them. Mm. And Bray Wyatt was doing really well early on, and they screwed him over by not letting him get creative and evolve. Exactly. So, it was Rick, look, it was Rick it Bogner, by the way, FYI. It was Rick Bogner. He was, all, he was Big Titan. He was Fake Razor. He was Rick Titan. He was Mega Mask. I'm lost. Poor man. Yeah, really poor, poor Rick Wagner, wherever you are. You didn't yeah, deserve I, that. I don't care what kind of a person you yeah, are, you didn't you, deserve I, you, that. You got, you got the shot. Yeah. Yes. So many begging. Um, yeah, about, yeah, with Bray Sorry. White. Um, it would also help if they let him win a match if he won a while, once a while, by Frank Rich. Just anything. But he's, got like, he's got like one of the worst win loss records in the company yeah. the last few years. Uh, no. And when Road Dog first said, it's just made me laugh. Wins and losses don't matter. 
Oh, really? To a point, they don't. He's not totally wrong. To a point, they don't. But when somebody loses every single solitary match they're in, it's probably an issue. Exactly. Right. Unless Kurt Hawkins, and then it's a storyline. Exactly. If, if you're building somebody up to be this legitimate threat, this legitimate scary, no, zealot, mythological person, yeah. no, monster type character, yeah. if you have him lose four times more often than he wins, I think it's a rough ratio, it's not going to become convincing after a while. No. So, you know, if he, as, as good he is, as he is on the mic, people won't buy what he's saying on the stick if he can't back it up, if he can't back it up, he's getting a W. So. No, he's the new face of job. He's not the new face of fear. He just jobs all the time. Like, but he, then might he, also, he might just have job squad written on his shit. Easy, Richard. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what? That wasn't that Kendra's. Was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, if had evolved a little bit, with his character, he might have gotten somewhere even with the losses. But he's been this character since he debuted. I'm hoping this Matt Hart thing is a big jump for Bray. Because he's been yeah. deleted. It could be a lot of fun as Brother yeah. brother Bray deleted or maybe some other character entirely. It's a chance to really repackage him and, I don't know, let him win a match or two, maybe even. <laughs> I just... <laughs> With this whole Bray Wyatt thing, I honestly just really hope that when he comes back, it leads somehow to the real Sister Abigail storyline, not the yeah. whole cross-dressing crap. That was just yeah, man, that was ridiculous. But she's dead. They said she's dead. But remember, he was tossed into what was it, Lake of Resurrection or something like that? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, Thank you, Michael Cole. The whole storyline right there just writes itself, though, for her to come back. But she wasn't yeah, tossed she into the lake. He was. Something. What's she that? comes back from the dead and pulls a man. Whatever. I can. I get can, her. We don't need to be particular because I can go for. I can go for it with that gimmick. Nothing makes sense. That whole broken thing, or woken thing. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So it's cool. It's just a movie. I love every second of it. So if you want to stretch but, truth, go ahead and stretch it. But when Wyatt comes back, they have to continue it. They can't just end it right there. It there's more to be told. I want and Cole to be next. He drops that ball and just tells Matt and Jeff because admit it, we all know Brother Nero is coming eventually. Oh yeah. Oh please, um, I hope so. I I played away. I shows up for Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I get carried away. And I just want to point out, Butch is the only person here that actually has a career in music. So. <laughs> Based on that vocal performance, you mentioned it then. And he's going to spend the most time dead rendition of Bob Delight. <laughs> and I can't sing a tune. I, I, I did a bit of it. Just saying. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Moving on, guys. Um, one thing I would really, uh, I'm really looking forward to, actually, is... um. I was actually lukewarm at the idea at the beginning of uh, introducing a new toll to NXT because I think WWE has way too many tolls already in all, on, all, on all their brands and planning to introduce more. And But the North American title, and the, specifically the ladder match that's bringing it up, I am really looking forward to it, actually, uh, because the level of talent in that match, Ricochet, EC3, oh, and yeah. Dunk, I mean, it's kind of big. Velveteen um, Dream. Oh, Velveteen yeah. Dream. Adam Cole, baby. Baby. I, I did the baby. Cut her off. <laughs> That's not a swear word. Just keep it. Uh, it's, did you see that ladder match? Yeah, it, it's a ladder match. It's going to be a ladder match for the New York American Toll. Yeah. And climbing a ladder? What? Yeah, no, that's... Scary. Well, well, hang on. Remember in the War Games match, she did coast to coast, so he's more agile than he looks. Killing and Dane were talking, yeah. I'm assuming. Is that what the issue is? Yeah. Because he can do anything he wants, FYI. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm serious. He's fantastic. Don't worry about the size. Don't let it fool you. 
said, I mean, Harvey. Yeah. He's very athletic. I mean, he is. I'm, I'm a little. I'm, I'm a little PO'd that he stole Kenny Omega's finisher, but I suppose there's only so many finishes in the world. But of course, course you are. I'm Team oh. Omega. I, moving on to another thing, okay? Here's another thing. Ring of, Ring of Honor's doing the big show. 6,000 fans. We'll move, we'll move wrong. 6,000 fans, the, the biggest crowd they've ever, they've ever got. It's built on the strength of the Bullet Club storyline. You know, Team Kenny or Team Cody. Um, also, we also have, you know, the, the Women of Honor uh, Championship Finals. We'll talk about that too, but we'll stick to uh, Team Cody or Team Kenny right now. So I'm just going to ask all of you guys right now, who, which which side are you on? Team Kenny, Team Cody, and we'll move right on to women's stuff. <laughs> Obviously, I am Team Cody. have been for a long time. I don't like Omega. I got, I got mm. an um, I got a really cool Omega pin in my um, wrestle crate a few months ago. Handed it off to my son-in-law. Oh, Sorry, but I don't know. I just don't like Omega. It's first. I, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I think you're doing pretty well. I think after that ROH, but like, um, if, if you had to pick between the two, would you be Team Cody or Team Kenny? I have honestly always liked Cody. I've always liked Cody Rhodes. He's amazing. He he's very good. But I w, I I'll be honest. Good. WWE when he left dropped the ball big time. Oh, big. huge! Because oh. they wouldn't. He was another one like we were just talking about. He was another one of a victim of creative differences. Yeah. They didn't let him have control, so he said, "I'm out." And, and if they would have let him thing. have full control of the Stardust character and Any. everything else. That could have gone places big time. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine if Stardust was still around right now with Broken Hardy? Sorry, Woken he, Hardy. He didn't want to be Brother Stardust Rudolph anymore. That was Bray the Wyatt. Could you imagine those four, the match potentials? That's true. I mean, just in the characters alone. I mean, but it'll probably never happen now, unfortunately, because WWE completely burned that bridge. Utterly, yeah. and, and he will never play yeah. Star, and he will never play Stardust again because that was the problem. He wanted to be out of that character, and Vince wouldn't let yeah. him out of it. So he went fine. Bye. No. Right. Later. Right. And well, it was and, also if he was going to be in that character, he wanted full creative control. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. Give it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It didn't help that the um, that. He had put in all of his time when he was getting married and going on his honeymoon, and they forgot until the day before when he invited them. Yeah. Why they did the whole? He was in the middle of a push, so they did the whole fired storyline thing. They really screwed up with Cody from early on. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And 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 another thing about that. Sorry, Jess. And another thing about that. Um. Touching on the earlier point before about if Daniel Bryan left, he would make, only make about a mil a year instead of two mil a year. Cody's actually making more on his own than he is making than he made in WWE. Yep. But that's probably oh, no. helped by that Bullet Club sell so much merch. Really, that's yeah. Yeah. isn't that also because it's a cut? Isn't that also because they're allowing him to go out on independent tours or independent events rather as well? So he's well, basically not, get, not getting most paid. Are, most. Most ROH in New Japan guys get to do that because the way their schedule schedules work, they can take outside bookings for a cash. So, exactly. Whereas with WWE, when you're under a contract with them, yep. yeah, yeah, it's them That's or it. nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Except if you jury the King Lawler, and that was a whole other thing unto itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's an aberration. I think he was the. Wasn't really... he still booking the USWA while doing commentary for WWE? Yes, he was. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know how he worked that out. Although I think he was under a Legends deal too. I think that might have had something to do with it. Yeah, probably. Vince, like, I think it was part of his take deal. Out... Say again, Kendra. Vince didn't want to take out that territory. He wanted to leave it because it was so well run by Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wanted Lawler on TV, and it helped both the WWF and memphis and it was just it he's the only territory that did did completely destroy yeah that was the one and and, and after uswa went over like what uh 
Jude Lawler was doing for him in, in Memphis, allowing, allowing almost like a developmental ter territory, really. ECW yeah. took, took that. So. And it was because it was the king, and he, Vince knew he could do it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. I have to say too, when it comes to, to Cody, because I'm, I'm with Jason, I love Cody to death. And I think, I think, yeah. and Kendra too, I think that the coolest thing about Cody. I'm the only Kenny fan in the law. You are. Yep. Oh, you are all I about yourself. I didn't like Kenny. I just said it comes between the two of them. I'm team Cody. Yeah, that's what but I'm. Yes, yeah. Kenny on his own. Kenny is great in the ring as well. He is. I'm with you. Definitely. Yeah, I agree with you. But I think what makes Cody so good is that he wins social media. I mean, he regularly oh. ethers people that come in contact with him when he has to. He's just so. Oh, that guy thing is going. Through. No, but it's. I was Baha. Yeah. I when I read that. It's not just him. He could pull it out on anybody. He's absolutely yeah. vicious on Twitter. It's beautiful. And then we can't leave Cody without not talking about Too Sweet. Have you been watching <laughs> Being the Elite? The boy band? It's genius oh. stuff. I was dead. <laughs> oh, that's probably the one Bullet Club gimmick I'm not, I'm, I'm like, warm on. To it's so funny, though. Stuff. Come on. It's so it's, funny. It's funny, but I kind of cringed a bit, too. That's, that's just me. Yeah, no, it is cringy, but it's really funny, and they pull it off, really. It's, they've got the archetypes maybe, down cold. It's maybe so it's funny. Maybe it's more cringy for me, because I grew up in the time when boy bands were big, and I look back in that time and think, why the hell, why did I listen to that stuff? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. New kids so, on the block. <laughs> That's it, even worse. It was years ago. That's even worse. The Warbird, Warbird boys. Yes. At least they did R and B. Okay, back off. There was some good music there, just not a lot of it. And there were pillowcases and marbles, <laughs> but that's a whole other thing. But Team oh, Cody, yeah. darn it, Team Cody. All right, cool. Team Cody. Um, another cool thing happening at uh. Ring of Honor's Supercard show is uh, they're introducing their women's championship, the first Women of Honor title. Um, Good. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing um, the semi final matches uh, on Facebook Live for the pay per view. I, I, I really wish I remember the names, but I know the front runners probably are going to be Neil Dashwood and one of the uh, stars from Stardom, but I. I'm a little difficult with their names, so I don't know who they are. And they'll probably one of those, those two will probably Sunil Dashwood, of course, formerly being Emma in WWE. Yeah. Know. Um. So chances are, uh, those two, either one of the girls that I'm on for Sunil would be in the finals on the pay per view. If that happens, I'm fairly sure Sunil would win. So, and I think that would be obviously very cool because I think towards the end, I, you know, another another example of WWE not doing right by somebody, and they. Left the green the past year's doing probably doing better. So, yeah, Emelina, worst thing ever for her. That just wasn't yeah. her. That was the dumbest no. thing ever. Yeah. What she was over with the evil Emma thing. Why change that up? That was the dumbest. Ugh. That, she had, don't even get me stuck on that again. And she had great music too. I'm a music guy. Yeah. I loved her theme. Oh. And then they just went that. No, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Well. I, that, that being said, I love I love her um, new uh, theme for um, uh, Ring of Honor in Japan, so that's very good. I do too. I heard it. I was actually quite surprised by how good it was. I, I sent it to you, actually, I think. You did. You did. Because you sent me that one and you sent me Marty Skrull, which I love. Yeah, that's that's the best theme in wrestling. genius. Ever. It's absolutely genius. It's so, oh, it's so good. It's You'll not, have to send it later. It's so good. That's, oh, it's so good. Yeah. The villain... The villain Marty School has the best interest theme of all of pro wrestling right now. Yes, That's it's better than anything CFOs have come up with. It's that good, and yeah, I love CFOs, that. but it's that good. Yeah, it's that, yeah. and then Ember Moon, and then yeah, Beyond. But mm. yeah, that's the best one that I can think of. Honestly, that was so good. I was so surprised when you sent it and how good it was. Mm. Now. Uh, we, and, you know, Ring of Honor is not the only separate promotion from WWE that's running a show. And, and it's actually, I was actually really surprised when I heard this. And I honestly wasn't all that excited. But Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling are teaming up at, during the WrestleCon. Now, the annual convention that's been, been a thing the last few years, uh, WrestleMania weekend with a bunch of indie promotions, indie wrestlers doing shows, doing uh, podcasts, doing signings, all that stuff. 
good to bring legends out, you know, kind of like a WrestleMania access outside of WrestleMania, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling, for those who have not been watching the new Impact Wrestling, I've seen a couple of episodes and I will say as I enjoyed poking fun of Impact Wrestling as much as everybody else. I'm enjoying the product a lot more. It, I, I know that's shocking. It's still a lot of holes in it, quite frankly. Yes, there but are. The, res- the wrestling is solid. It and always was, man- though. And, and, and yeah, I know, true. But it always but was. I'm enjoying the cr- I'm enjoying the creative direction a lot a lot better. Um, Don Callis, who some people may know doing English commentary for New Japan, may know him as Cyrus from ECW, and his uh, um, the Jackal. And yeah, the Jackal as part of the Truth Commission in WWE. You know, he's he, he's he's a brilliant creative mind. He knows what he's doing, uh, and I think he's. And as you can tell, in those Impact got their highest ratings in like two years. On not just on Pop, but on back when they're on DA as well, and they got um, I think like four hundred thousand, which is much compared to uh, you know um, WWE or even New Japan's ratings on on Access. But for them, that's huge. So. So it's, it's an improvement. And I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, uh, the, the matches that will have with Lucha Underground talent because I'm a big yeah. fan of Lucha Underground. You know, it doesn't air in Australia, sadly, so I have to get my fix through iTunes. But the two superstars I'm really keen on is obviously Pentagon Dark and, uh, you know, Pentagon, Pentagon Dark, Pentagon Zero M, if some people don't know, Pentagon Junior. And his brother Ray Phoenix. They are absolutely brilliant wrestlers, and they they're doing a tag team match with um, Alberto Albertron, which none of us like, but he, he can work. And um, oh, uh, Eli Drake, which again, not much much of us like. But uh, I love I love it, Eli Drake. You don't like Eli Drake? Nah. Why not? I guess yeah. I got to hear. Why don't you like Eli Drake? Uh, well, because all he all, all he does is dummies, yeah, dummies, yeah. That's that's the antithesis of his character. I yeah. mean, that he doesn't do much, and 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 he's kind of boring in the ring too. I mean, I can kind of see that, but he's got more charisma than most people have in their pinky fingers. I think he's great. Like that whole, uh, what was it? Um, uh, 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 that's uh, that's just a fact of life. That whole, I loved that. I thought he did a great yeah. job with that talk show that he had. It was one of the few bright spots on Impact Wrestling. You didn't like it, really. I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah, and um, and Impact Wrestling, to their credit, they're making, they're making full use of the Twitch channel because they've got like four True. days with the programming lined up, not just uh, the yeah. wrestling show. They are, yeah, they've yeah. got all kinds of stuff lined up. They've got um, Rosemary entering a, a voodoo shop in New Orleans. That would be fun to watch. Love Rosemary. Oh. Oh. Yeah, uh, they're doing um, uh, 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 wrestlers uh, poker tournaments. They're doing um, celebrity crossovers with uh, the rapper Whale. Um, Wale, oh, yes, bro, doing... Wale. His name is Wale. Well, well, He's not a whale. It's not an aquatic know. show. Hip-hop's not, hip-hop's not big in Australia, okay? So soon, okay? He doesn't know anything reason, about that hoppity hip. Hoppity hip. There's a reason why we picked Iggy and Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea. Iggy Celery? No, that's not her name either, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know Australian rappers. Although there are rappers. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you all so much. I hate you all. He said whale with conviction, no less. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, oh dude. Oh. Well, um, I love it. I just you know one really good Australian hip hop crew called Hilltop Hoods. If you don't know who they are, check them out. Oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> go okay. ahead, Morrow. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> um, I, oh, I I'm about two seconds away from jumping through that screen, man. I'll tell you. What, Jacob? I just actually looked it up on the ratings for the for Impact. For the last four weeks, they've actually been holding steady at right about 365 to 370,000 viewers. That's good for the wow. Give idea, to give an idea, the last show in February only had 258,000 viewers. They actually jumped by over 100,000 viewers in one week. 
That's been so, really impressive. It is. I agree. And well, that again, at the that's, same time, that's too, in the gratitude direction. At the same time as well, you can also trace it back. I don't know if it's related or not to when Austin Aries came back and won the title. I think you may be right. Oh. I think it might be related. I mean, it probably is because there were a lot of WWE fans highly ticked off that they released him like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. That, that was stupid. It was ridiculous. Was he didn't get to do anything. <laughs> Another person they like, treated. But yeah, when you mentioned the ratings, I honestly was flipping through the last couple of weeks, and it's like, I mean, they're just shy of four hundred thousand. I mean, that's. Compared to yeah. the last two years, like yeah, you said, that's yeah. highly impressive. Oh, yeah. Last, it is. last week, they got 399. So it's the highest ratings they've had in two Since years. Since last July. Yeah, not, not just on pop, but on Destination America, too. So. True. Right, last time they scored wow. that high was last year in July. Yeah. That's impressive. And they actually scored just under that number this last week. Mm. That's impressive. So they do. They have some themes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think what well, we made fun of them for, you know, hiring Don Callis. We made fun of them for doing the twi- doing Twitch. It's kind of working. So, you know. You're right. If, 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 it, it's, if, if, they're, if it works, I, why I not? Don't, work, you know? I don't fault them at all for trying Twitch because no. look, at what, look at what uh, Facebook Live is doing for WWE with yeah. the uh, – with the the challenge they just finished up, it, yeah, is um, it drawing in three million viewers like Raw is? No, but yeah. you know, it's still drawing in several hundred thousand, and that's you know pretty impressive for a media that's practically brand new. It's been around for a little bit, but they're just now starting to develop it in Facebook. And for mm-hmm. Impact to turn around and start using Twitch, which is new, well, new-ish. Yeah, it's new. Yeah. I mean, that's, and those ratings I looked up, that's just TV ratings. That doesn't count those that are watching online. Right. Mm-hmm. True, it does. So who knows how <clears> much <throat> are yeah. watching on Twitch and then following when it when the next episode televised, is televised. I mean, it... But the biggest thing for me with Impact in the last year was that turned me off the most was honestly when they got rid of the refs and started bringing in the yeah, that was, that was that, it, like that, that was just like, downright cold hearted. Well, yes, it was. That, I agree. Especially, especially to somebody like Earl Hebner. Yes. I mean, yeah. Somebody like I, him. Two of them did so much for TNA for so long and they just kept Alan, included like nothing. Yeah. I mean, Earl left. The WWE or the, the WWE or F at the time to go to it them. Was yeah. and no, he got fired, for... he got uh, fired, and it was and there was actually a good reason why he got fired. Him and his brother right. no, David, the they were doing some uh, un, uh, uh, back backdoor merchandise deal on the slide. They were um, taking unsold pieces of merch and trying yeah, to yeah, which wow. It, Earl got, his, his name was on the business that Brian was basically running and doing horrible things with. And that's why Earl got fired. And I think it's okay. total full. Which is actually kind of minor compared to some of the stuff people get fired for today. True. I mean, heck, we got two active wrestlers right now with DUIs on the record. Yeah. In the past three months. Uh, well, one of which we know is not going to be with the other we don't know yet. Right. He'll be back, and he'll be back soon. But, hey, you, well, there's worse. I mean, uh, the biggest acquisition I have now, Ronda Rousey, has a, a, a DV mark on it, a domestic violence mark on it. So it's not going to Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, but it didn't I mean, happen. I, I heard that was dismissed. Well, it was dismissed, oh, but it... Oh, oh. It's still, yeah. it's, well, you know, it's it, still, it's still the reason so. I heard, and, her, and, her, and her new husband has, has had accusations as well. So true. now the reason I heard that that accusation was actually dismissed, I don't know if this is true or not, is because 
basically each of them filed against each other and then it turned out the retaliation and it was like okay we the court was like we're not getting involved with this but then also along those lines let's go back four years ago when brock lesnar came in fresh off of his uh suspension from ufc which if he goes back <laughs> has to serve six more months of that suspension before he oh, can yeah. even get into the octagon right yeah and matt yeah. honestly i wanted to say this earlier but we moved on <clears throat> that's where i believe vince with wwe is going to have major negotiation power with him be at least to keep him for six months at least through SummerSlam. <laughs> Because he can't even do anything in UFC until the middle to end of September. That means for the next six and a half months, he's not making anything. Not that he needs the money or anything, no. but you know that could be major higher uh, holding power <clears throat> in favor for Vince. Now, I know, no, will I... the deal will get worked yeah, out for really. WrestleMania? Honestly, probably. Because look at the last, what, three years, the contract has always been signed literally either Sunday morning or Saturday night of WrestleMania weekend. Because Brock yeah. holds out every time. And mm. I think that's what he's doing this time. Mm. Yeah, it could be a I good mean, it's I don't, it's I'm, I'm with you guys in agreement, though. Yeah, Brock needs to go. But if they keep him... They need to utilize him correctly as a part timer. Take the strap off first. They won't they, though. Take the strap. But no, they won't. They won't do it. I agree no, with you, but they won't do back it. To the original point. I mean, when they when they brought him in, right off of that suspension, it's like, I swear, every WWE fan I spoke with said the same thing. What are you thinking? You're an idiot. Yeah. I mean, you're bringing a guy in who just tested positive, not for one, but for two banned substances. Right. Well, and it's like, really? Okay. Because now, as a fan, you're looking at it, it's like, I have no words. I, 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 yeah. So much for your wellness policy, right? Like, <laughs> what was that all about? Oh. His contract is different, so he doesn't have to follow the same Roman rules. Roman Reigns seems to come to mind a little bit. Mm hmm A lot of it. Or Randy Orton. Because when... Oh, yeah. Who already oh, has three. Or... Randy I thought, I thought he only had two. Uh, punishment was actually much yeah, okay. more severe from, than Reigns. From what <laughs> I remember. But, yeah, Orton's definitely had three strikes, and he... Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I think WWE knows they need him. Well, the yeah. thing is, I, I my worry is that Brock is going to sign a contract with Vince over the weekend, and they're going to flip the ending of the match, and Reigns will still walk out with nothing, and Brock will still go home with the Twizzler belt, and we'll stuck with no champion yet again. I think I think what will ha I think if I don't do that, I think come hell or high water. Vince wants rain strapped, even if it just won't work, no matter what. Hell or high water, that's going to happen. If, even if that's some far off coincidence that didn't happen, Lesnar will probably drop the belt to someone like Roland or, or Finn or something, you know, not after on Raw. Because that will be A, the way to get the belt off them, and B, it will be a big buzzworthy thing for the Raw after man. So. so that's just. Do you guys hear me? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're good. So, so, that's I, just, I mean, yeah. if the only upside I could see to flipping the belt to Reigns and keeping Lesnar is at least we get a rematch. Whereas with this, there is really no build. Okay, Reigns won the Rumble. Lesnar wasn't at the inter the pay per view in between. It's like. So basically, we just went right from the rumble to this with hardly any build. It's like, um, okay. So then they're going to strap reins and then just end it? It's like, what happened in the days of storyline? I mean. I'd be okay with really? that. Storyline. Ah. 
I'd be okay. In this what, instance, I, it's, it's, get it off of it however you do it. Like, not, not any straw. <laughs> sometimes anymore, not, I, I wonder... Sometimes anymore, I wonder if Vince and Triple H are backstage five minutes before the show with a 20-sided dice rolling, playing Dungeons and Dragons with the show, basically. Dungeons and Dragons. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Roman it's, enters yeah. the ring with Braun Strowman, saved <clears throat> by a shield. Yeah, right. No, but I mean, if you look at the way WrestleMania is structured, they know how to do storylines. I mean, for crying out loud, the whole Shane Daniel... Uh, Sammy oh, and yeah. Kevin thing that is a storyline masterfully yeah. done that went oh it took time they pulled it off well they can do it they're just Vince is so insistent on pushing Roman towards Brock and getting the title off of him that he just doesn't he doesn't care about storyline holes that that's not important and it's, it's not even that one anymore it's all of them they seem to rush through so many storylines per year anymore it's like what happened to having take for example the, the last DX run when they reunited in 2006. They yeah. ran with that for what a year, year and a half, almost a bit. perfectly with the storylines <clears throat> and building it up. The Spirit Squad storyline with them alone ran for how I think that storyline alone was seven, eight months, right, and no one got bored with it because it kept building. And it kept progressing. But the lines now, it's like, just as they're starting to get good, hey, we're going to end it. It's like, what? You've only been doing this for a month and a half. Why? Another match that's, I think it's going to be a sleeper hit at WrestleMania that we haven't talked about yet is actually the Cruiserweight title match between Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander. I think that's going to be the sleeper hit. Those two guys have been killing it on 205 Live. Even though it took, you know, such a horrible scandal to do it, yeah. 205 Live is finally in the right direction. Triple H is booking it. So it's being booked more like the Cruiserweight Classic, which is what got these guys over in the first place. Not the ridiculous storylines that Vince was coming up with. And so now we, and, and now, you know, this match is just going to be brilliant. I mean, I know Botch is super excited about it. He won't shut up about it. So it's going to be epic. Uh, it's simple, really. Cedric Alexander, and I'm going to go ahead and say the most controversial thing I've ever said on Royalty in the Round. Cedric Alexander is the best worker in the business. Yeah, I said it. Don't hurt me. But it's that's a bold statement. And that's what I mean. I've never seen somebody so athletic. In, he's so crisp and so athletic, and he tells a fantastic story. His emotions get in it. He's just the, he's the best I've ever seen. He's as good as I've ever seen it. Mustafa's not far behind, and they they're gonna, they're going in there with a mission to steal the evening, and they will. Ooh, I will open you to that. They will own the evening with this match. They have way too much to prove. They will own the evening with this match. All of Cedric's passion and Mustafa's passion will come out, and everybody will be into it. And if you're not in the, if you're not sitting down for the pre-show, you're a fool. I agree. I feel that way all the time, and I'm going to hold you to that because Monday night the Royal Inquisition is going to be all about recapping Mania. Sweet. As it should be. Sorry. Tune in, tune in, Facebook, so, tune in to Facebook Live every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for that, guys. Just cheap luck. <laughs> Do my mic volley. <laughs> what, what, were you, what were you saying, Jace? Um, hey, uh, I was just going to ask Botch, at what time for the pre show am I supposed to tune in? 3 p.m., 4 p.m.? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. I think it's 10 p.m. the previous evening. I think that's when the proceedings <laughs> begin. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah, right? It's just the, like the longest show in life. Yeah. I but think, I, I, I believe... Four like, o'clock Eastern? I, 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 I think, think so. so. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Australian, so I have no idea what the time's going to be. It's probably going to start like five o'clock in the morning here. I don't know. But I think it's like four o'clock East in, in the US, so... Yeah, forgive okay. me, she's Australian. He doesn't actually know anything, so... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Ah. <laughs> uh, coming from an American about knowing things. An American Seriously. with Skittles sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, 
Funny that you think that's a point. Hey, <laughs> at, at least Australians can get their beer right. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. With Fosters. <laughs> he loves Fosters. No, that's another thing. We don't drink that swill. Fosters. I'm not swill on here. Oh, if people think we drink, we don't. It tastes like, you know what? We sell it <laughs> they're the only people on earth whose taste buds are dull enough to drink it. Like I had a Foster's once. Is out there. We don't drink Foster's. I had said a this before. once, because, and that's because it was included with my meal. Did you, oh. did you hate it too? It tastes better than Bud Light, I'll put it that way. Yeah, so you and hated it. <laughs> Victoria Bitter, Forex Gold, Han Lager, Cascade Lager, Pure Blonde, best beers in Oz, best beers in the world. Just chucking that out there right now. Noted. Here in the U.S., I'm a Yingling drinker, so. I have no idea what that is because I'm not in the U.S. <laughs> but anyway. Um, See? From Australia. Yingling. Knows nothing. There you go. Yingling is out of uh, eastern Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I am really surprised Kendra has not heard of Yingling. But then again, Maine may not have it either because it's only in 12 or 13 states. We when I when I go to Pennsylvania this summer, I'll get some and try it. We have it in it's D.C. A darker, we have it down here. It's a darker yeah. brew and it's not as um, powering, overpowering, I should say, with the hops, but it's not as weak as a lighter beer. Like, Budweiser is. You know, yeah. who else, you know who else drinks beer? AJ Styles drinks beer. Really? Yeah, that us. See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. I saw it. Nice segue. Nice segue. Nice Anything segue. for you, bro? Anything for you? I'm, but I'm pretty That's sure, right. pretty sure uh, good Christian boy probably doesn't, but still. Thanks, anyway. Uh, enough segue, anyway. I, I, think it, I think the segue went over Kendra's head. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's getting late. <laughs> yeah. It's well, not her fault. We have one thing that well, we have two more things to cover in this episode. But two we more. Have the, 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 the no, we're gonna uh, we have to cover the big matches of Manny, obviously. Now we did big matches of other shows, another the Butter match of North American Toll, Kenny vs. Cody and Ring of Honor. So we have to cover the big matches of Mania and one of the biggest matches that we can cover is of course Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Dream match. Something that I must point out has actually happened once before in Japan at Wrestle Kingdom ten. So it didn't happen. Stole the show. Stole the show that night. And I and if they given enough time here, they'll do it again. But I'm very concerned they won't be given enough time. They will. They will. They will. I think I, so too. I, I, nope. just, I just I just hope Vince doesn't have a brain fart and decides to then that thinks Brock can go 20 minutes because he can't. 10 minutes max. Give uh, give give AJ and Sh uh, Shinsuke 20 minutes, please. Shinsuke is going to have the most amazing entrance, other than Triple H. He's going to have the most amazing entrance. And they are going to give AJ and Nakamura enough time to make it fantastic because even Vince knows how big this is. Mm. Just one thing. It, uh, you guys search YouTube for Shinsuke Nakamura's Wrestle Kingdom entrances because he seats very flamboyant. He had some great entrances in Japan. We had, like, you know, crowns. He had pole dances. Uh, really cool stuff, by the way. Really? No. Not, not that kind of pole dancing. But don't wish to offend your delicate Christian sensibility. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I can't win. I'm just gonna. We know you're the good Christian boy, mate. You're the good Christian boy with a bunch of heathens. You're gonna have to expect being made fun of, okay? Exactly. <laughs> that must be for the fastest crack. Gotta be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, buddy. All right. <laughs> and you know and obviously that's going to be here but obviously the biggest talking point of the entire Wrestlemania weekend all the shows is going to be the mixed tag match Ronda Rousey making a professional wrestling debut tag, uh, tagging with Kurt Angle facing Triple H and Stephanie McMahon what do you guys really think obviously you know Ronda's you know, never wrestled before, and making that transition is not as easy as it sounds. People like Ken Shamrock, 
had gone on record and saying it was the hardest thing he's, that he's ever done. And this is somebody who fought in the early days of MMA, which was bare fist and no rules and really crazy. Somebody who got his start in MMA doing the Japanese MMA, which fish hooking and things were still allowed. And you had guys like Minoru Suzuki breaking people's arms for the fun of it. He's saying that the, the transition to go to MMA to pro wrestling was the hardest thing he's ever done. And he had several years to train for it. Ronda's had, from what I can tell, about, about a year at most. I know she's had training with Brian Kendrick and uh, Natalia prior, prior, prior to going to the uh, Performance Centre, but she's still first match, very green, and she's working with somebody like Stephanie McMahon, who's not really much of a worker herself. So it's going to be, well, to a degree, I mean, well, hang on. They are a really classic Stephanie McMahon match. You can't. I mean, not, I, you know, just, just, just what saying. You, Mitch, what are, what are you talking about? She's the original Brock Lesnar, held the title, for the women's title, in 2000 forever and never defended it. <laughs> but no. That <laughs> And she shows it every time she's in the ring, but it's just so few and far between. Well, the last time I saw her work was the Brie Bella match, and I wasn't all that impressed. But that's just, but, but, but no, I was actually more impressed with Brie Bella in that match, and I'm not a Bella fan, so. She was good in that match. Well, agree to disagree. Anyway. No, no you're wrong. Okay. Why did she say right? What's that? Right. I know. Gonna be. I, I have to say, I kind of agree with all of you because was it her best work? No. Was it her worst work? No. No. Far from it. It. It was. I will say, I do hope this match on Sunday is definitely better. She, if she does it like she did with Bree, it's not going to hit home. No. But. Stephanie is okay. as thin as we have ever seen her, and as is the hint that you must feel like seen her. I those pants she was wearing Monday night, she wouldn't have been able to wear those even when she was twenty two. She just she's in the best shape of her life right now. Yeah, and I don't think they'd be putting Ronda in a match at WrestleMania if she wasn't at least close to ready. I hope so. But I just have worried because I've seen her do some throws with, you know, we've seen Seamus when she's throwing Dana Brooke, and it looked a little sloppy, a little risky, quite frankly. And then she did this, uh, the Samoan drop with Stephanie McMahon, and even Tommy Dreamer said on Twitter, you know, don't tuck that arm in, you're going to, you know, hurt yourself. But she landed and she put her arm back, and Stephanie landed on her arm, and that's a good way to break the arm if you're not careful. So, oh, she's so. still green. I think she isn't. So, yeah, but that's just what I'm saying. For what I've seen so far, I'm a little concerned as well, as, as all. She's a McMahon. She will be ready. Simply because her last name is McMahon. She will be ready. I have no doubt in my we're mind. About, what? <laughs> What's we're that? talking about Ronda now. Yeah. We're we're about Ronda oh, now. I'm sorry. My bad. No, but, oh, well, then we could go there. She's Ronda Rousey. She'll be ready. There's too much pressure on her. She will be ready. We can do. We can mean, say that for her, too. It, it, it kind of know already who's going to win the match. I mean... Oh, they're yeah. not going to have Ronda come in and lose. No, can't. No. But yeah. in all honesty, to showcase her dominance, how I think she's going to win the match is with Triple H and Armbar, not with Stephanie. But because if she gets it's him mixed, to mixed tap match, out, match oh. well, if she gets him to tap out to the Armbar either way, that would demonstrate some dominance. Oh, I, I can. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. They can't end the match that way because it's not intergender. It's mixed. It's mixed match. But what right. they can tag. Well, it's not intergender as of yet. Oh, they won't do that. They really are avoiding men hitting women in any in any way, shape, or form because of domestic abuse. But yeah. I think that's, Ron that's a tricky could, area. Huh? That's a tricky area. Because when I watch Lucha Underground, because they do it, and they do it justice. Women, right. Men and women are treated 100% equal in that situation. It doesn't That's come off. 
it, and it that's, doesn't come off as abusive as at all. But again, because WWE is the bigger company, even if they do it, if it even if they do it a bit and bleach up the green, it doesn't come off as abusive. It'll still, right, it's still get that in line. But at the same it. time as well, WWE for the last what has it been now a year and a half has been on the big movement about equal equality with women in the ring and men in the ring, especially yeah, that's for that's the war, uh, uh, Survivor Series. Rather, that's when the push really started big time. So, how are they going to say the men and women are equal? If they're not going to allow intergender matches, um, well, that's the they thing. They should I... allow. They should allow the wrestlers, like, and I use that term loosely with Ronda, but uh, as an example, I'll put in Nia Jax, who oh, yeah, is. She could. Nia I mean, why why can't wrestlers like that work with men? I'm not saying throw in Carmella with Big Show, for example. You know. <laughs> She get crushed. We all know it. Oh, no. <laughs> no. But no. Have, have some of these have some of these and I don't mean bigger women in the sense of overweight. I mean bigger women as like China was muscular. Uh, have them work with some of the men. Guys. I mean, there's no reason they can't do it. Me too. And that's the reason you can't. It's not gonna happen. It, Me it, too. It, it, it's just it's just yeah. It's just the wrong time to bring it up, mate. Politically, socially, it's just the wrong time. I agree yeah. with you just, entirely. Just not now. That, you know, it, yeah, exactly. I agree with you entirely. But, I mean, I the thing is, a lot of things about equality is subjective. Like, a lot of things about equality are still debated. Like, again, intergender wrestling is one of the best examples I can give of what is equal and what, is, what isn't. Like, what is... Right. Uh, because one person can have the argument that, you know... If the women women wins, the great thing for a female empowerment. But if the bloke wins, it looks like abuse, and that will be a valid argument. Then the other person, can, but then another person can first say two, they're two. They're not treated as man and woman. They're just treated as two people as equals in combat, and that, and again, they will be right as well because there's two sides to that, quite frankly. So it's, and that's it's why just, I agree. And that's it's, why it's just, was... it's just a difficult, you know, like I said, equality. To a degree, it's subjective. Few th- a lot of things shouldn't be argued, but some things can be. So it's just going to be... It's, it'll be a tricky thing to sell in this day and age. And they, what's going on. Right, right. Just, it, and that's why I was using the example of doing it this weekend with Rhonda and Kurt, because everybody knows how strong and how good Rhonda is. Yeah. And well, I'm sure, she I'm sure would be they, a perfect person to do something like that with. I don't know, they couldn't end the match that way, but like, I'm sure they could do something like they did at Manny a few years ago when she judo tosses him or something in, during the match. That would be okay. The problem right. is could, the problem is 2018 in a publicly traded company. That's the only problem. In the indies, they do it, and I think it looks fantastic. I don't have a problem with it. I agree with Jason, but it's a publicly traded company in 2018. Right. It can't. They and, can't. And, and 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 this is and it's again. That's that's the debate. Is it equal or is it abusive? And there's valid arguments both sides of it. And it's just a bit of a murky area that WWE can't afford to go to. So it's just no, they can't. Simple as that. I agree. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's the whenever I talk to the fans that I'm friends with that, and we talk about equality. That's the one of the things they bring up. It's like. When are we getting intergender matches? If they, and if they were going to do I, it, they could have done it with Ellsworth. Agree with both sides, it's it's how do you tow that line if you're going to do it? I don't see it happening at all. Yeah. In the East. They could have done. They could have done it with Ellsworth. They missed an opportunity to do the Andy Kaufman thing with Ellsworth. They could have done it, and I was hoping they would when they didn't. The indies now take a lot of money from. So. And he's doing that on the indies. Yeah, I know. Yep. That's what I said. He's actually made an he's made a new intergender title and he's defending it. That's he's right. Making yeah. From it. I know, I saw it. It's great. Like, why didn't they do that in the E? Because then you could play the comedy angle and, oh, it's not that serious. Yeah. You, They might yeah. have been able to, if they were going to get away with it, that would be the way to do it. But yeah. unfortunately, the other stuff, as Mitch so eloquently pointed out, it's just too murky to try to be too serious with it at this stage. I mean, there is another way they could do it. I mean, specifically the women's battle royal comes to mind, Santina. Yeah, like a comedy thing. Uh, yeah, comedy. I would love to yeah, see yeah. Santina again, yeah, but, but I'm weird but, like that. But, 
Yeah, but they, 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 uh, if, if, if they did a... What's another thing, though? If they have a bloke in there in, in drag doing it, A, that, and a, that might be a, a, offensive to people of, who are trans, and B, if, they, if, that, if, if that bloke would win, it would be like a disrespectful thing to all the women in the match, because, you know, having a women's match... It would be like Ellsworth you know, helping Carmella win the first Money in the Back ladder match. That was a massive mistake, and fans quite rightly put WWE oh, yeah. task for it, and WWE realised, crap, we bug it up. We got and part of me honestly believes that's why they scrapped the whole Bray Wyatt, Sister Abigail thing is because I know some people that were highly offended by that. Yeah, I can, I can, I can absolutely un- imagine that. Yeah. We have a very good uh, friend who was a writer at WR who was trans. She hated yep. that and for good reason. So. I mean, I, I get that WWE was trying to be creative. They were trying something different, but they just came about it wrong. They did it wrong. Oh, wrong. Absolutely. Completely. I agree. Mm. I agree completely. Um, since- I know we said we're definitely going to talk about a few more matches, but I really want to hit on Asuka and Charlotte. Yeah, actually, we probably should, shouldn't we? So, and that's another thing too. Next year, I don't have a doubt about my mind that Ronda Rousey and Charlotte will main event WrestleMania. WrestleMania 35, that will be the main event. I don't have a doubt yeah. in my mind. And, I would love that. That would work. Yeah. And, I, and I think because of the situation with Ronda, we'll be staying on Raw. Ronda will be stay on, staying on Raw. I don't, I don't doubt that with the brand split. And I think... I don't want to spoil anything or give anything away. You know, we haven't written out predicts yet. They'll be up tomorrow, but I think it's fairly certain Oscar will win that match. The match will be incredible. Oh. They'll have a re- they'll have a rematch. Charlotte will then be drafted to Raw in the upcoming draft that's happening, that we believe is happening, I should say. And then for the, over the next 10, 11 months up to Mania, that's what the bill will be. It will be Charlotte versus Ronda for the Royal Women's title at WrestleMania. I don't know if Wanda will have it or Charlotte will have it. What about Oscar? Well, Oscar will be on SmackDown, so. He's talking uh, specifically about Ronda and. Like Ronda and Oscar, I think, might be fun too. Oh, it be amazing, but the question is the streak, and I think that Oscar's streak needs to end before she gets into a big deal with Ronda because I truly believe Ronda is not the right person to. And Oscar streak. Yeah. So. Only Ember Moon should end that streak. Uh, there, I've it, said that too. I think what's going to happen, guys. I'm sad to say, Oscar will beat Charlotte for the, the title. I think and so. And then Carmella will cash in because Carmella's because they've teased it twice. It's going to happen at Mania. They teased it twice on TV. Usually, when they do a, t- a tease cash in and it doesn't work, you know, once or twice, you know, they're going to save it for a big show. To cash it in, so that was a genius way. That was a genius way they did that too. I got to hand it to creative for that one, because she was before she could even hand the briefcase completely over. Charlotte just kicked it out of her hand. I haven't seen that yeah, one before. Yeah. I liked it. That was really good. Yeah, that was clever. I thought that so too. Very clever. I thought so too. But what if? So what if she cashes in and she loses? I hope that does not happen for the very first women's Money in the Bank. I think that would be yeah, setting I, a bad I, I, I did that with. I did that with Sandow for, for the men's, but he was like the 10th person, I don't know, not the 10th, but the 7th or 8th male Money in the Bank winner. So, they, so, so yeah. th- that was okay. If the first women's Money in the Bank winner, she needs to win. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit bad, especially as Carmella, ever since Ellsworth was released, they haven't done much with her. So. That's true. I am. I, I have it in my prediction what I think is going to happen with the cash in, and I don't think it's going to happen on SmackDown. And we'll leave it at that because predictions are up tomorrow. Or, exactly. bit, or by the time or you like, see this, they will hey, be I didn't up. Scroll anything. Oh, that's yeah. true. By the time you see this, they will be up. So go look at the predictions and stop watching this video. What's the matter with you anyway, huh? If I watch it, you, yeah. You, you, what do you? What's wrong with you guys? I've been watching four, four idiots talk about wrestling for two hours. Nah. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Who Come does? Please. Who does that? I mean, oh, <laughs> who does that? Like a queen and three idiots talking about wrestling. Who does that? What's, what's the matter with you? 
turn it off. You know, we still haven't really even discussed the AJ Shinsuke match. We did. No. We did. We, it's did, to, we did to a bit. But we, we've been going on for about two hours. We can go on for ten hours, but we have to wrap it up. I mean, we could. People okay. have lives. And we. it's late your end. <laughs> it's afternoon oh. my end. I've got stuff to do. So, I'm Sue Mitch. That is, of course, Queen Kendra Bunyan. That's Potch Reed. And our good friend Jason joining us for the first time. How have you, have you enjoyed yourself today, mate? Thanks. <laughs> Great. Good cool. to know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, a few words is our Jason. Okay. See you around, guys. See you sweet.